Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, an internal medicine and rheumatology specialist. You've probably heard someone say that the tongue is the strongest muscle in the body. Well, that's actually not true, but it does hold many secrets about your health. So grab a mirror, take a look, and let's get into it. Okay, so first, stick out your tongue and see what color it is. A normal, healthy tongue is pink with little bumps called papillae on the surface. But if your tongue looks like this, red and smooth, we call this glossitis, and it can be from a nutritional deficiency. So the woman in this photo presented with one month of pain in her tongue and reduced taste. And when you look closely, you can see that she doesn't have those normal little bumps on her tongue anymore. It turns out she had severe vitamin B12 deficiency caused by an autoimmune disease called pernicious anemia. That's a condition where your body creates antibodies that prevents the absorption of vitamin B12. And this is her tongue just one month after taking vitamin B12 injections. Pink and bumpy, just the way we like it. <laughs> and a reminder to all those vegetarians and vegans out there, you guys are at high risk of B12 deficiency, so make sure you take your supplements. Okay, try this. Can you touch your tongue to your nose? <laughs> I'm so far off. <laughs> if you can, it's a rare talent. Less than 10% of the population can do this. And like most things in medicine, someone put their name on it. So this is called Gorlin's sign. And it's much more common in people with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is a group of genetic conditions that are characterized by stretchy skin and hypermobile joints. But it could also be a sign of macroglossia, which is our next topic. So macroglossia literally means big tongue. But how do you know if your tongue is too big for the rest of your mouth? Well, check out the sides of your tongue. Do you see imprints of your teeth on either side? That's one sign of macroglossia. So if your tongue suddenly gets bigger, it's probably an allergic reaction or an infection. And if your tongue just keeps getting bigger, it's gonna make it difficult for you to breathe. So you need to get to the hospital right away. But if this is happening slowly over time and your tongue is continuing to grow, I think about hypothyroidism, uh, where your body's not making enough thyroid hormone, or acromegaly, where it's making too much growth hormone and your tongue is literally still growing, or amyloidosis, where you have amyloid proteins that deposit in your organs, including the tongue, which makes it grow. But if your tongue has always been big ever since you were born, it's probably just congenital, one of the things that just makes you you. So open your mouth as wide as you can and stick out your tongue. How much can you see at the back of your mouth? The soft palate? The uvula? The pillars? Based on what you see, you get a score. And that's your malum patty score. That's an assessment tool to identify difficult airways. Meaning, how difficult will it be to intubate a person and put a breathing tube down their throat? The higher the score, the more difficult the intubation may be. And while we try to make these assessments before intubating a patient, it's not always possible based on the situation. Like for me, when I'm involved in intubating a patient, it's almost always an unexpected life or death situation in the hospital. It's usually not realistic to have a patient sit up and open their mouth so I can take a look. Instead, I'm looking at a whole bunch of factors in the moment to help me. Like, do they have a big thick beard or a wide neck? Are they missing their teeth? Uh, can they move their neck? Do they have any trauma to their face, like fractures in their skull? All these factor into a difficult airway. And sometimes when it looks like an easy airway, it still can be difficult. So I always have plan A, B, and C with the equipment ready to go in the room. Okay, I clearly get really excited about intubation and code blues, but back to the Malin Patty score. Now, it also tells you about your risk of sleep apnea. That's a condition where your breathing stops and restarts many times while you're sleeping. So if you have a high Malin Patty score and you know that you sleep, it's probably a good idea to consider getting a sleep study to see if you have sleep apnea because it's been implicated in car crashes, heart attacks, stroke, and the good news is that you can treat it. So you don't want to sleep on that one. So when you looked in the mirror, if you notice that your tongue has a bit of a thin white coating on it, that's really normal. And if you brush it, it should go away. But if it doesn't, there are four main causes of a white tongue that I usually think about. The first is thrush. This is a yeast infection that causes raised white patches that sort of look like milk curds or cottage cheese. The key point here is that you should be able to rub off those white parts and underneath the tongue will look red, irritated, it can even be bleeding. A classic scenario is that it happens after someone took antibiotics, which change the normal bacteria in your mouth, giving an opportunity for the yeast to grow. But it can also happen if you have a problem with your immune system, like uncontrolled diabetes, HIV, or chemotherapy. Okay, but let's 
let's say you try to rub off the patch, but you can't, and you notice that the patches are more flat and hard, well, this could be leukoplakia. Think of it like plaques that develop because the tongue gets irritated, usually from tobacco or alcohol. And it's important to keep track of these because they can develop into cancer. So talk to your dentist or your doctor if you notice something like this. But let's say those white patches actually look lacy and you've got a burning sensation in your mouth. Well, that sounds a lot more like lichen planus. Now this one's a bit of a mystery but it probably has something to do with the immune system because it tends to get better when it's treated with steroids. And finally, if those white patches are mainly on the side of the tongue and it looks like this, then it could be hairy leukoplakia. That's definitely the most rare. So it's caused by EBV, which is the virus that causes mono, the kissing disease. But lots of people get mono and they don't get this tongue issue. So this is a clue that there's something wrong with the immune system. So this picture is of a 29 year old man who went to the doctor because of these white patches, even though he felt perfectly healthy. His doctor ran tests on his immune system and this is how he was diagnosed with HIV. Once he started treatments, his immune system got stronger and he was able to fight off the virus on its own and the white spots disappeared. So definitely a super rare cause of white spots on the tongue. Okay, next I've got some tests I want you to try. But first, I just wanna give a quick reminder to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you like random medical topics and hospital vlogs. Now let's get you looking in the mirror again and see how agile your tongue is. So in general, there are are five movements that your tongue can make. We've got rolling, cloverleaf, folding, and then twisting left and right. <laughs> I've got to say, doing this makes me feel like a kid again. <laughs> How many can you do? So believe it or not, researchers in the Netherlands actually studied this and they found that most people can roll their tongue, that the cloverleaf was the hardest, and that only 5% of people could do all the movements. And it seems like the ability to move your tongue may at least be partially genetic, but I'm sure that you can practice to make it better. Like I need to work on my tongue folding. <laughs> so what does it mean for your health? Well, probably not too much unless you were able to do the movements now, and let's say in a year, you can't do those movements. You'd wonder, is it a neurological issue where you're having weakness, or is there a lesion there you're not able to move the tongue around it? As a rheumatologist, I see people with Raynaud's phenomenon all the time. Now, this is a condition where a person has an exaggerated response to the cold, where their blood vessels constrict and clamp down too much, causing their fingers, toes, and sometimes their tongue to change color due to lack of blood supply. So this is a 29 year old woman with Raynaud's in her fingers, as well as her tongue, which is pretty rare. So every time she got cold or ate something cold, her tongue would change colors and it would become numb, making it difficult for her to speak. This was her first symptom of the autoimmune disease called scleroderma, which causes thickening and tightening of the skin and also sometimes the internal organs too. But there are other causes for Raynaud's of the tongue, like this woman who had cancer in her right tonsil, which was treated with radiotherapy, and ever since then, every time she would get cold, her tongue would turn blue. So now she's cancer free, but she's had to give up ice cream and slushies to prevent the Raynaud's from coming back. Now take a look at this tongue. Does it remind you of anything? If you said strawberry, you're right. We actually call this strawberry tongue when it's red with these prominent bumps. This is classic for scarlet fever caused by group A strep, the same bacteria that causes strep throat. It can also happen with Kawasaki disease, a serious illness that causes blood vessel inflammation in kids under the age of five. As you guys know, I don't treat kids. So the last time I saw this was in pediatrics rotation in medical school but these kids can get really sick with fever, rash, they get red eyes, their hands and feet get swollen and they can get enlarged lymph nodes. Now this is geographic tongue. We don't quite know why this happens, but it's more common in people with skin psoriasis and asthma. So it's probably related to the immune system. Maybe it's the immune system trying to communicate with us. Although you might think this looks really serious, Luckily, this is a harmless condition that goes away without any treatment. So as a rheumatologist, I often look under a patient's tongue. I expect to see salivary pooling, so pools of saliva. But if I don't, I think about Sjogren's syndrome. It's an autoimmune disease that can affect the whole body, but classically it causes very dry eyes and very dry mouth. And we can test patients by having them sit in a room for a period of time and then spit out all the saliva that they make into a container. Super high tech, right? <laughs> Some people with Sjogren's barely make any saliva and you can just imagine how uncomfortable that would be. And it causes major issues with their dental health, 
Plus, their tongue gets so dry that it becomes painful, dry, and cracked. Okay, so now that I've unlocked a new fear for you, I just want to remind you that Sjogren syndrome is very rare, and there are much more common causes for having a dry mouth. Probably one of the most common is side effects to medications. Okay, let's move on to hairy tongue. Now, these photos are a little more dramatic, so if you're eating or you have a weak stomach, you might want to skip ahead. <laughs> this is caused by a buildup of the protein keratin on the small little bumps of your tongue. And keratin is actually the same protein that makes up your hair, but don't worry, that actually isn't real hair on the tongue. And this hair can take on different colors depending on what's going on in your mouth. What did you recently eat? What bacteria are natural to your mouth? But I've got to say, the most dramatic is the black hairy tongue. This is a 55 year old man who spent 11 days in the intensive care unit, intubated, hooked up to life support. And when he woke up, this is what his tongue looked like. So why did this happen? Well, it's probably a combination of things. He's a smoker, which is a risk factor. He received lots of different antibiotics in the ICU, so that changed the bacteria in his mouth. And he wasn't eating, so there wasn't any food to naturally scrape his tongue, so there was time to have buildup. But luckily, it's reversible with a lot of brushing and scraping, his tongue went back to normal. But it doesn't just happen to adults in the ICU. Here's an eight week old baby who's perfectly healthy with a black tongue. It was dramatic enough that they did a biopsy to make sure it wasn't cancer, but it was just a mix of bacteria and fungi. And within a few weeks, without treatment, it just went away. <laughs> Have you ever had a canker sore? The medical term is aphthostomatitis, and they're small, painful ulcers that are not contagious, and they go away without any treatment in about one to two weeks. One in five people get them in North America. That's a lot, and we still don't know the root cause of them. We know there's probably a genetic component, definitely true for me. I get them, my mom gets them, my grandmother used to get them, and my medical opinion is they suck. <laughs> But as a rheumatologist, if I see a patient that has recurrent oral ulcers, then there's a long list of conditions that come to mind that we have to think about. So if you've never had ulcers in the past and then all of a sudden you start getting them, then it's worth talking to your doctor to make sure that it's not related to one of these conditions. And if you have an ulcer that isn't going away, like it's not going away in a couple of weeks like you expect, or you feel a new lump on your tongue, you have to think about cancer, you gotta go in and get it checked out by your doctor right away. This is a man who had a mass on his tongue for six months. And you can see, it's actually pretty small. It'd be easy to overlook this. Luckily, he saw his doctor, it got removed, and he was cured of cancer. This man smoked for most of his life, so that's probably the cause. But there are other risk factors like human papillomavirus, or HPV for short. And the exciting thing is that we have a vaccine to protect against HPV. So we have a vaccine that can prevent cancer. How cool is that? So just remember, tongue cancers normally don't hurt or cause any issues early on. So if you notice something, just go and get it checked out to be safe. So if you like this type of content, I just want you to know that it's part of a series of videos so you can keep learning about what your nails or what your hands say about your health. And let me know what you want to learn about next. Maybe what your eyes or what your ears say about your health. <laughs> Leave me a comment to let me know. So be sure to subscribe and that way I'll see you in the next video. So bye for now.